This cartridge can run any Nintendo Switch game. That's right, flash carts are here for the Nintendo Switch and I got my hands on one of the first on the market right now. Best part is they work on any Switch, yes, even brand new unmodded ones. So I'm gonna show you how this works, what's different, and why I think this little cartridge is honestly gonna break buying used games forever. So this is the Mix Switch. It's the first flash cart available for the Switch. You might have memories of similar flash carts that look like this for the DS, where you load it up with an SD card and just toss in a bunch of ROMs on there. And this is pretty much the exact same concept. Hey, hi, before we get into the video, I need to clear up a few things, okay? Like, just, no fancy lights, no fancy cameras, and that, just me, iPhone, and you, and just some things I have to say. Okay, so Nintendo has a bad reputation of taking honest discussions like this down, so just to be safe, I'm not gonna be talking about any sort of piracy in this video. No illegally downloading things, none of that. All the games you see here, I bought with my own money, and legally by myself. Sometimes even more than once. No, I don't know why I have four copies of Animal Crossing. I don't know, maybe just, I really like the game or something. So if you're looking for a place to talk about that underground type stuff without, you know, piracy and all that stuff, this video's not that. On a completely unrelated note, I have a Discord server now where you can talk about all types of different tech stuff. And I even included an exclusive video that has nothing to do with this uh, over there. I'll leave that link in the description if you wanna join. So let me show you how this thing works. You only get the card by itself and this tiny little wrapper thing. It has an SD card slot where you can put in your own SD card and load it up with ROMs. I have a 512 gigabyte in here just to make sure I don't run out of space, but you can use any size. But the big selling point here is that it can work with any switch. Yes, that means stock unmodified switches too. I wanted to show you how this works. So here's a no edit, one shot cut of how this works. Pay attention. So this is my stock OLED switch. This thing has never been modded other than the blue shell. And I even took out the SD card to prove that there's no custom firmware installed. I place in the mix switch. And sure enough, there it is, booting up just like any other cartridge. Pretty cool, right? The crazy thing is, online seems to work too. Here's me in a multiplayer match connected to online. And since this is my own copy, and the mix switch is only emulating the copy that I own, there seems to be no problems. And that's kind of the big thing here, is as long as it's your own copy. So you gotta dump your own games to make this work. So let me show you how this process works. But first, ever been stuck trying to figure out what to say in a text or a business email? They wanted to reach out to that cute classmate, but don't know how to get a conversation going. That's not right. No. Well, thanks to Type AI, you won't have to worry about that anymore. Type AI is an iOS keyboard directly powered by ChatGPT, designed for you to just respond to anything you want from your fingertips from any app. No more need to go back and forth between the ChatGPT app. Just type what you want, it'll generate something for you, and off you go. Need to sound professional for your boss or whatever when he offers you an insultingly low rate? Easy. Your buddy's going through a rough time, but don't know what to say? Nah, who needs social skills anyways? Type AI has got you. Or what if you need some quick ideas for a date that you totally remember to have planned? Ah, you're so good at planning dates, look at you. There's so many more uses a thing can do, change tone, paraphrasing, translating on the fly from several different languages, and so many more features. So go to the link in the description and get yourself a free trial so you can try this out yourself. And thanks to Type AI for sponsoring this video so we can keep making fun videos like this. So how do you actually get games on this cart? Well, you gotta rip them of course, legally using your own copies of your games. Now, before we talk about how we get games in this thing, I'm mostly gonna be running through the legal, ethical way to do this. Now, I know piracy is gonna be a big topic in the comments for sure, and I cannot stress this enough. Please use your own rips and support the developers you like when possible. Now, currently the only way to legally rip your games is through a hack switch, which is funny. Uh, if you had a hack switch, you probably wouldn't even need this card. Uh, they are releasing a USB dumper tool that could hook up to your computer without the need of a hack switch, but I don't think this is a great idea, and I'll explain why later on. But for now, yes, the main way people are gonna be ripping their games is with the hack switch. If you have a buddy that's really into this stuff, go ask him or her to help you dump your cartridges. Odds are they'll know what to do. Now, because Nintendo has a sniper pointed at my living room window, I can't exactly show you how to do this on the modded switch, uh, but just know that for a full rip of a cartridge, you need these five files. Once you somehow obtain these five files, you can toss them over to a PC and drag and drop them over using the mix switches SD card. If you have a cart rip like this that has like a separate folder in there that has like part one or part two or part three in it, uh, what you can do is copy the name of the XCI file exactly, uh, make a new folder with the exact same name, then drag and drop everything into that folder. Uh, the mix switch should be able to detect it. Then you can pop the SD card back into the mix switch, toss the whole thing back into your switch, and there it is, Scott Pilgrim your own legally owned copy running off a flash card. Now, obviously no one bought this thing to just have one game. So you just repeat the entire process for every game that you want. And this takes a while. Uh, it took me like two days just to be able to rip half of my game collection. Now to switch through a game you wanna play, you eject the cartridge, wait like half a second, then reinsert it. This is, I'm, 
I'm not a big fan of this. <laughs> uh, back in the old days, flashcards would just disguise themselves as a different game, then give you a, like a menu to choose what game you want. I figured that this method might lead to people wearing down their card reader and it eventually failing. Plus, what happens if you have more than like 20 games on this thing? Do you really want to sit there cycling through 19 times to get to the game that you want? That's going to do crazy damage on your card reader. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not particularly hard to replace your card reader. I've done it before. But uh, the people that are buying this are probably not comfortable taking apart their one and only Switch. <laughs> now, what's fascinating to me is, and I didn't discover this, Alien Retro Gaming did, all credit goes to him for discovering this, is that there's a dock that you can buy that is designed for holding multiple cartridges in one. So you could have like five different games loaded up in the back and switch between them by just pressing a button. Pretty cool, right? But this hilariously also works with the mix switch. So what you can do is just plug this one cartridge into the dock and using the included wireless remote, just cycle through all your games without having to damage your card reader. It's a kind of bulky solution, but it's kind of hilarious that this works for people who play mostly docked. This is a really loaded dock too, especially for the price. And it's even cheaper than an official Nintendo dock. Uh, I'll leave a link for it in the description if you want to pick one up. But anyways, yeah. Not a fan of this whole switching games method. Okay, so let's talk about the thing that this thing can do and its drawbacks that I think more people should probably know about before even thinking about getting one of these. Now, first, it's important to understand the two most common file types for Switch games, or the, the ROMs, I guess, XCI and NSP. NSPs are Nintendo submission packages. These are what are uploaded to the eShop, basically digital copies of the game. Forget about these, don't use these. These will not work on any mix switch, and even if you manage to find a way, 100% chance of a ban. Straight up loading one of these, insta ban. And XCIs are cart files, literally the files that are put on every Switch cartridge. These are unique to every single Switch cartridge, and as long as they have the certificate and all other files, uh, they should work just fine on this cart. As of now, any XCI should work perfectly as long as it has all the proper five files needed to run. If that's all you want to do, great. This mix Switch works exactly as the original cart. Oh, hey, last minute update, but I forgot to mention that I've been able to use the mix switch to update my games that are on the mix switch and they've been working just fine. So if you were wondering about if you could update your game safely, so far I've had no issues updating my games. What it can't run, however, is any sort of homebrew apps, any modded apps, no custom firmware, none of that. It also can't be used for pairing any sort of update files for games or installing any DLC. So you rule that out as well. You can't use it to back up any games. Pretty much the only thing you're gonna be able to do with this thing is play backed up games. If you're hoping to use this as some sort of alternative for modding your Switch without any other work, uh, this isn't that. Uh, hard modding or just buying a proper V1 modded Switch will still give you so, so much more for your money, more features, more mods, everything you would want to run. I bring this up because while this never advertised itself as an all-in-well alternative to modding, people are still reporting the cart this way. And unfortunately, the creators behind this cart aren't really doing a great job to correct anyone. So now it falls on responsibility of viewers like me to explain that this only does one thing, cart rips. If you're cool with that, awesome. But otherwise, that's all this thing is. This isn't anything new for people that are actually interested in modding or homebrew. Now, the big question, I know we're all thinking it, can this be used for piracy? Yes, but I will not elaborate any more than that, but you guys are smart. Now, I know a lot of people are probably wondering if something like this will get your Switch banned, and while I can't outright guarantee 100% no, you won't get banned, because Nintendo can just decide to wake up tomorrow and just find a way, uh, I think it's important that you understand how Nintendo knows if a cart is legitimate or not. So as I showed you before, each cart has five files on it. A lot of stuff going on in here, but the important one is this one, the certificate. This file is unique to every cartridge and every single cart has a unique one so that when you have to connect it to the internet to give you your eShop coins or anything else, it tells Nintendo, hey, this cart is legit. Here's where it is right now. It's in this switch. Everything is good. So because your rips are just moving with a certificate from one cartridge to the other, and the real cart is just sitting in a storage somewhere, you're not connected to anything. Theoretically, no rules are being broken. And to the switch, it's just the same cartridge. So you're good. I'll be honest, I've been playing my legal rips on this thing for almost four weeks now, both online and offline, and I haven't had any issues and I've been able to still connect to the Nintendo Switch online just fine. But that's just my experience. Now the problem starts when that perfect copy is being connected to two different places. So if Nintendo server sees the same game with the same certificate connecting at the same time from two completely different Switches, it knows, oh, something's up. And it absolutely has the ability to brick the cartridge and the console, ban the console, all of that, it's just, straight up just banned. Now the mix switch devs, they claim, they, they claim that if you really want to, you can just set your switch to airplane mode. It doesn't connect to the internet anymore and all is well. But just know that running something like this, keep in mind, you're always running the risk of something happening to your switch when using stuff like this. Now, if you're smart, you might've already seen the problem with this setup. And if not, well, I think it's just better if I just showed you. Okay, so I picked up Mortal Kombat for 22-ish dollars. You can see there, right there, GameStop right there. 
Okay, so the card so far has its uses and it has its flaws, but something that I feel not many people are talking about is the implications that this flash card actually has on the used gaming community. Let me try and explain. Okay, so this game is used, all right? I bought it with my own money. It's in my own hands, so that means legally I'm entitled to rip this and back this up properly. Okay, so I just finished ripping it onto my mix switch, so now the cart is actually sitting on here instead of over here. But let's just say I'm a bad person. Let's just say my mom didn't love me as a kid. Uh, I don't care about getting banned or anything like that, and I just want free games or whatever without having to think about it. So I'm gonna go and return this copy. Okay. <laughs> So the copy's gone now, but I still have it in my mix switch right here, which means I, st I technically still have the game. So what happens to that copy that I just returned? It's gonna go right back to GameStop shelves, and eventually somebody else is gonna pick it up, they're gonna go home, uh, we're gonna be playing the game at the same time, connected to the same servers online, and eventually their switch is gonna get banned, and my switch is gonna get banned, even though they had zero interactions with the mix switch at all. Okay, let's flip the scenario around then. You decide to buy a used game from GameStop or Craigslist or OfferUp or anything else, right? You buy for it fair and square. You have zero interest in any sort of like hacking or modding or anything like that. You just want to do this the right way, the legit way. You pay for your game, you get home, you toss it into your Switch, and then realize your console just got banned. Not because you did anything wrong, but because the card that you just bought was already ripped and somebody else is already playing it. Do you, do you kind of see the issue here? Now, this is a small scenario, and I assume there's not enough interest in this card to even get that to happen, but this place is a huge precedent if it's even gonna be safe for people to buy used games anymore. Maybe people have to start listing their games as like verified not ripped or something. Or Nintendo might stop using the certificate as a means to be able to figure out and verify if a game's legit or not, which I don't think is gonna happen, which means the more likely outcome is that Nintendo's just gonna have a bunch of banned Switches walking around. Uh, it's really scary, honestly. I've just been thinking about this a lot, and I just feel like there's not enough people talking about the implications of what this might mean, not only for illegitimate users, but also legitimate users that are just trying to buy their games the right way. Okay, let's go back to the desk. Okay, continuity. Ooh, continuity. We're back. Okay. So who is the thing actually for then? You can't run any homebrew on it. Um, it costs just as much as just getting a proper modded switch. And there's still no guarantee that you won't get banned. So what's up? Okay, for one, it's important to note that this was never explicitly labeled as a solution for super simple all-in-one modding alternatives. It's not. It's literal only function is to run backups of games. Although I still feel like the people behind this cart aren't really doing the best job of marketing it that way, honestly. And in that regard, I don't see it as a great value either, honestly. The mix switch is $60. And since to do this the right way, you still need to get a cart ripper anyways for another $65. That means you're looking at $125, not including tax or shipping. And again, this only does game backups, nothing else. The reason I bring this up is because I've seen many other people in the LA area that do mod shipping services for switches for about 150 bucks. For $25 more, you can get infinitely more features of your Switch other than just backups. I'm talking emulators, capture cards, Android, game streaming, themes, overclocking, and on top of all that, you don't have to worry about getting banned. You tell me which one sounds like the better deal. Now, in spite of that, I still feel like there's a very, very small market that I think this thing is perfect for. And as long as this person is okay with like three main big things, I think that there's still people that are going to buy this. So again, three big things that this person has to be okay with, okay? Number one, this person doesn't care about any modding stuff or custom firmwares. They just want to go out and play their legal backups. Now, some people just want a really simple, no frills way to be able to keep an entire game collection in one cartridge. Losing one of these, oh wait, where is it? Oh, we're okay, we're good. <laughs> what happened? We're so good. All right, we're so good. All right, cool. I carry this around with me when I still wanna play like my physical games and losing one of these is like losing 500 bucks. Uh, losing one of these is just like losing 60 bucks. So I feel like you can tell which one hurts less. I actually bought my six year old brother a modded Switch Lite so you could have access to like all the bunch of games and mods and stuff like that to play. And it was just, just a mess, honestly. Like I, I could not explain to a six year old how to launch into Hikate or how to boot from your MUMC or you make sure you don't boot into the Sysnet and stuff like that. So I could totally picture somebody just taking one of these, handing it to their little siblings or whatever and being like, all right, yeah. Go nuts. All right, number two. This person has to have no interest in playing any online or even care about being banned. Now in researching this video, I've been talking to a lot of different Switch owners and for lack of a better word, normies. Uh, and I came to find out that, well, yeah, there's a lot of people who love playing their Switch online on Smash Bros and stuff like that. There's plenty of people who also just don't care about online and just don't ever connect their Switch to the internet. That means for them, the risk is pretty much like non-zero. Uh, if using this card means that their Switch is banned, all right, so be it. And number three, it would need to be cheaper. Now, like I said, I personally don't believe that the mix switch in the dumper tool is a good deal because it's, it's honestly not. Before I moved to LA, there was a guy that I lived by who was doing mod shipping stuff out of his room for like a hundred bucks. So the value for me just isn't there. But let's not be naive. Uh, we all know that eventually clones of this cart are gonna be coming out. Funny enough, opening the actual mix switch cart, you can see that they sanded off the names of the chips inside the cart because they know that eventually other people are gonna find ways to clone this thing. And this is a way of just trying to slow down the competition in any way they can. Right now, 60 bucks for this thing is a tough sell, but 
down the line, clothes are going to start coming out. They're going to be going through the market. 60 bucks turned to $40, then $30, then $20, and then eventually it doesn't sound like a bad deal anymore. <laughs> yes, it's substantially less features than a modded switch, but also at a substantially cheaper price. I have been thinking a lot about this little cartridge, not just the physical cartridge itself, but also the implication of what this is going to mean for the Switch moving forward. And as cool as this card is, don't get me wrong, I still think it's like really cool that we managed to see one in, in the Switch's lifetime. Uh, I just, I can't help but feel bad for Nintendo. <laughs> this is going to open up a world of issues and problems for them, even though we're at the end of the Switch's life at this point. So just to reiterate, do not buy this if you think this is the way for you to get into modding. It's not, it's just for game backups. And while game backups have a dirty reputation of people are using it for pirating and stuff, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here and say, a good majority of the people watching this genuinely just want a good solution that allows them to keep their copies of their own games. Nintendo has been no stranger from anti-consumer movies in the past and owning your digital games has been nothing for them as they have time and time again shown that they do not care about preservation and have done things like shutting down their online stores or shutting down online services that their users pay for. I totally understand why someone would want their own physical copies to follow them everywhere. This is not a bad thing to want and don't let anyone convince you otherwise. But it also makes us think about what we really value in our games. Is it convenience? Is it online play? Is it the ability for us to know that these are our physical games and they cannot be taken away from you? I spent a very long time trying to think about where I stand on those questions. And I try to give you as much possible information as I can. Now I want to ask you, now that you know what this thing actually does, I mean, do you still want to buy one? Are you still interested in it now that you know that it can't do any sort of modding or homebrew? Or will you be waiting until clones come out to try it out? I'm not going to be posting a link in the description to buy this thing because, you know, Duh. Uh, but I'm sure you have a lot of things to say about this thing. So what I will link down there is my Discord. You can come over and talk about this sort of topic. I think it's a really interesting topic. I'm going to be hopping in and out of voice chat on the day of this video is being uploaded. So if you're just now watching this, maybe you can catch me on there. Anyways, click over here to check another video and uh, thanks for watching.